Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna solve example 5.1 called drag force on a smooth sphere. And this is the example that I refer to repeatedly in video 13. And so this is gonna demonstrate to you exactly how we get dimensionless groupings. So we're gonna use Buckingham Pi to actually figure out the groupings for a sphere, which we just sort of assumed throughout that video. So hopefully you really watch these two side by side because they're really integral to one another. And this example, I think, will clear up all of the concepts described in that video. They very much go side by side here. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, I'm gonna march through referencing all the steps we just described. So, what does it mean? Step one, step one, list all the dimensional parameters involved. So let's do that. Everybody who's involved is force, velocity, size or diameter of the sphere, density of the fluid, and the viscosity of the fluid as well. Five of those guys, n equals five. Step two, select your primary dimensions. Let's go ahead and use MLT. I would recommend that you do that as the default. And like I said, anytime uh, force is gonna be more meaningful to you, like it will, it will become clear as you look at the examples if you haven't done this right, or there's a, a more minimal way to do it. But ML and T generally, uh, that's the best choice. Mass, length, and time. Step three, list the dimensions of each of these parameters in terms of these primary dimensions. So what the heck does that mean? So let's use this example just to show what that means here. Step three, I'm gonna list each of the parameters and then the dimensions that go along with them. So a force, many ways we can think of this. I always like to think of forces as like mass times acceleration. So we know its dimensions are gonna be mass. And acceleration is units of length over time squared. So like kilogram meters per second squared, right? A velocity is uh, length over time, like meters per second. Length scale, of course, is a length. Density, kilograms per meters cubed, so that's a mass over a length cubed. And a viscosity, well, that one we did actually figure out when we went back and looked at uh, Newtonian fluids. So if you want to see how to figure that out, you can go look back there. But again, you get experience with this. You'll see from tables and that sort of thing. It's a mass over a length times a time. Alrighty, so it's clear now how we were able to write each of our parameters just using the M, L, and T. So like, for example, we didn't have any temperature in this case because we're not looking at heat transfer. So we go on to step four. Select a set of R dimensional parameters that includes all the primary dimensions. Okay, this one here generally requires a bit of experience too. So it's asking us to pick three of these parameters that include all of the dimensions in them. So for example, we have to have a mass and a length and a time in each of the ones we pick. So if we pick a D that gets us a length, we pick a V that gets us a time, and we pick rho that gets us mass. So those are gonna be our three. But you might be thinking here, okay, like how the heck did he know that? Well, there's a few rules of thumb. So generally, you don't pick your dependent parameter. So in this case, it's drag force on a smooth sphere that we want, uh, right? So you don't pick F, capital F. It's not gonna work out cleanly if you pick the parameter that you care about, that you're trying to solve for, right? So that's a rule of thumb. Viscosity, you almost never pick. That one's incredibly complicated to use as a repeating parameter. So I'll just give you that as sort of like a rule of thumb. You almost never use viscosity, right? So row, row V and D are, are generally really good choices. Those ones come up a lot. Now we see, okay, those are our three parameters. M was our number, the minimum number of dimensions we needed. So now we see that M equals R equals three. Okay, step five, set up dimensional equations, combining the parameters selected in step four with each of the other parameters in turn to form dimensionless groups. And you're gonna have N minus M equations here. So for us, N minus M equals two. So we're gonna need to set up these two dimensional equations. So what does that look like? I'll scroll down a bit to give us some more space here. 
So when we set up the dimensional equations, we're supposed to combine the parameters that we chose in step four with each of the other parameters, right? So we look at what was chosen in step four, a row of E and a D, that leaves us with an F and a mu. So for each equation, you're gonna take one of those leftover ones and put it in here. So for pi one, you're gonna have a row of V and a D, and then you're gonna to need to figure out the force functionality. So the row V and D are the repeating ones, right? So we put exponents on those to figure out how many of them we need. A, B, C is what we do. And then we sub in with the dimensions here to figure out what that pi term is. So when we go ahead and sub in densities M over L cubed, So we sub in for each of those, and then what we want is for pi one to be dimensionless. So on the right-hand side of this equation, the trick we do to make sure it's dimensionless is to make sure we have none of each of these dimensions. So you just write those to the zero exponent. Okay, so we need to have m to the zero, l to the zero, t to the zero. H to the is o, v to the is a. Now what we're doing is we're solving for those exponents. So we write the exponents out as their equations. So when you look at M, you have an A and a one. Let me circle that to make it clear. So the M is the A, and then basically there's like an implied one there on the force term. So I circled nothing, but I think you see what I mean. Now that's the equal zero. Likewise, we'll do the others, but again, I think you, you can look ahead here and make sure what I write down here is what you would have written down. So when I do L and T, try to look at that and just do it yourself. Okay, then you solve each one. You end up with A is negative one. C is negative two. And b is negative 2, and we sub it in, and we have our, our first pi term. Okay, awesome. Now we do the exact same thing for the second one. Okay, so the only one left over was our mu, so we write out the pi 2 term for mu. And our repeating terms, we'll just use like D, E, F because we already used A, B, and C for the exponents. So same exact thing. I'm just going to write it out here without the narration. All right, step six was just our check. So you can go ahead and just sub the units in for those, make sure they're dimensionless. That's all you have to do for step six there. And finally, we write out what we have. Okay, so the drag on a sphere. There's only two dimensions that matter, right? So when you're setting up experiments, you gotta figure out what this little F, so this functionality is here. And you just have to make sure you have a whole bunch of different uh, sets for that mu over rho VD, which we write also as rho VD over mu. It doesn't matter if you flip it right because it's dimensionless. So the next step here, which is of course already been done by many experimentalists throughout history, is you just find a whole bunch of different values for the rho VD over mu and then see by measuring what the corresponding drag force is. So now we don't have to do those experiments anymore. We can just take a sphere and we know exactly what to expect for its drag force. And that informs our decisions. That teaches us how to design for spheres. And as we get into a future section on drag, we're gonna take a very close look, right, at exactly what the Reynolds number means, exactly how we get that functionality. So for now, in this section, we just focus on how do we figure out how to find the dimensions, but we do remember there's a lot of value in this, so we're gonna probe this a lot further in future sections. Okay, that's all for this example.